one year on YouTube. And then I squeeze top to bottom. Broke things still come back. See that little beak in there? You hear it? Hey y'all, good morning. Amy here and welcome back to the farm. Today is a Friday. It is March 29th. It is Good Friday. And tomorrow will be Saturday, March 30th. That's the day that you're gonna be watching this video, which means that for y'all, tomorrow is March 31st. It's Easter Sunday. It's also one year on YouTube for me. One year, y'all, on March 31st, 2023, I shared my very first long form YouTube video. I had done a couple of shorts to add to some blog posts that like for cooking and things. Um, the prior to that, the first couple months of 2023, but I hadn't posted an actual real long form video, which I think it was only like 30 minutes long. Um, until March 31st. So it has been one year on YouTube, which y'all, I did not expect to be where I am today one year ago. And I'll be honest, I look back at those videos and I'm like, oh, it's a little bit cringy. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <sighs> you learn so much, you know, and things have changed so much since then, like the farm, the animals, so much has changed. So many new animals are here. Just, it's really cool though, to have it all documented, to have a place where you can go back and you can look at and you can see this is what has happened and you know, go back and be like, well, when did that happen? Oh, guess what? There's a video I can go back and see and I can watch it happen, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, so one year, one year on YouTube. So one of the things that I was thinking about doing for my one year on YouTube is taking the month of April and posting a video every single day, every single day. It won't be a longer video. It'd be like probably eight to 10 minutes. Most likely we'll see, but every single day, I don't know. I'm not going to commit to that yet y'all, but I'm seriously considering it because I think I can and I think it would help boost my channel and I think it would be fun because there's always something going on, okay? There's never not something going on. So I always have something to share and there's things that share videos with y'all like two and sometimes three times a week. There's a lot that goes on that y'all don't get to see because there's stuff that goes on every single day. So anyway, that's what, something I'm thinking about doing. Kind of like a celebrating the year of YouTube by posting a month full of videos. But anyway, for today, I am going to be taking y'all around with me while I do stuff. As you can see, I'm headed out to do the animals and Willow and Annabelle are upset that I'm standing here talking to y'all and not already out there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get them fed real quick and then I'm gonna milk and then I'm going to, actually before I milk, y'all, yesterday was hatch day for Pickle's eggs, okay? She's been sitting on the eggs and we candled the eggs a couple of days before their hatch date and they were alive. There was five chicks alive, but yesterday there was no pips, no hatching, no nothing. So we're gonna go real quick and I'm gonna go ahead and feed Pearl and then I'm gonna check on Pickle's eggs and hope to find some funny looking little babies under there and y'all are gonna come with me to do that. And then we'll milk and feed up and start this day. Let's see if there's anything under this mama here. Hey, Pickles. Do you know any babies? Can I look? Can I look? No. No babies. Let me see if we have any pips at least. We have a pip there. Can you see that? Right there. That's a pipped egg. Maybe they're just going to be a little late. Can I see? I'll switch out these. Here are these. We're going to check them. Look at this little hard reach. Ugh. Sorry, Mama. I'm just going to check. Okay. Got another little pit right there in this one. Okay, so 
there are two eggs with pips. Sorry, Mama. Tell me, Mama. I'll come back and give you food in a minute. Okay, so two pipped eggs. Hold on, Annabelle. Hang on. Two pipped eggs. So by the end of today, I would imagine we'll have some funny looking little babies. Okay, so I make my own wipes for her bag. Um, I use paper towels and I put them in a solution of water, white vinegar, and dish soap. And I use one to clean her before, and then I will use another one to clean her off after. So I wipe her down good, and then I will, turkey babies, turkey babies, hang on. Should probably feed them real quick, hang on. Struggling, there we go, got it on, okay. I'll feed them in a second. Um, she gets wiped down really good, and then I also wipe her with a rag, a clean rag. I realize you can't really see what I'm doing, can you? Sorry. Sure about that. Let's see. Here we go. That's a little better. All right. So then you want to milk out just a couple little bits to make sure that there's nothing at the end dirty. Like so. Then. Cows, okay. I grew up. Hang on, I can't see anything. I'll sit you out over there. Okay. So, I grew up on a homestead with dairy cows. Um, the very first dairy cow we had was Holstein, and her name was Molly. And when I was about 11 or 12 years old, I started milking. And me and my brother Daniel would take turns milking the cow. Like we would, one would do mornings and one would do nights. And milking a cow is different than milking a goat. So when I first got into dairy goats, I did a lot of research and they said that their bags are more sensitive than cows. Like with a cow, you strip and you pull down and you pull down and then when you're done, like you strip it out when you're done. I don't know if that makes any sense, but you're not supposed to do that with goats because it's, they're more sensitive. So with each squeeze, I have to let go of the udder completely at the top to let the udder refill with milk. And then I squeeze top to bottom, top to bottom. And as I do it, I, instead of pulling down while I do it, I kind of push up while I do it. So that it's not, can you see how I go up like that up? As I'm squeezing downward, I'm pushing up. So that, it doesn't like, I mean, you could still milk them like you would a cow. You could still strip it down, but it's just more uncomfortable for them is what, this is what my research said. So it's better to lift than pull. If that makes sense which it makes sense to me like I would imagine that would be more comfortable and at the same time when you think about it when you've got babies on her they're constantly pushing you know how a baby goat like pushes its nose forward and pushes against the bottle and things like that so a push rather than a pull it made sense to me there it is that's probably about I got about three quarts. See all that foam on top? About three quarts of milk this morning. All right, before I let Willow go, I'm gonna go ahead and feed these turkey babies. 
because trying to feed other animals when there's goats around, y'all, they think they need everything, especially Willow. So, we keep their feed in a closed up bucket here. All right. And, watch out, watch out, watch out. There's another animal in here now along with the turkeys. Look right there. Do you see that right there? This is a minute, I'll show them to you. There you go. I don't keep feed available to them overnight because it would just, just disappear because at night the rats get in there and they would eat all their feed and it would not be sanitary and so I don't keep feed in there overnight, but the turkeys all have names y'all. And there was a new fella in here. All right, let me show you him real fast. You're gonna have to, don't come out. All right, hold on little ones. Hold on little ones, you like for a second. Okay y'all, look. This is, okay. You're gonna have to be surprised to hear me say that, this, but this is hopefully a rooster. Yeah, I said hopefully a rooster. I know, right? You, you wouldn't think I'd say that. <laughs> okay, this is an Isabel Brahma. He's gonna be absolutely gorgeous. Can y'all see the color in the, in the pretty? Oh my goodness. Okay, Isabel Brahmas, they're not very common. My friend Miriam from the Chicken Daddy Farm is raising these and I wanted a rooster to replace, not to replace, but another rooster to have because I lost my Brahma rooster, Samson. And Samson had a injury up in his hip that he did not recover from and he had to be put down because he, he got down and he couldn't walk and it, it, we did a lot and it didn't, it didn't, didn't work. So he had to be put down. Um, and I wanted another Brahma rooster and she has, she's raising these beautiful Isabel Brahmas and I wanted a rooster. So we're going to hope it's a rooster, but, oh yeah, the names of the turkeys. First of all, I think I'm going to call him Parker. That's what I think I'm going to call him. I haven't run that by the kids yet, but that's what I'm thinking I'm going to do. <clears throat> all right, hang on. Hold on. We have a pig bump in the camera. Okay, Levi, what is the name of your turkey? Barney Five. Deputy Barney Five? Yes. His turkey, his turkey is Deputy Barney Five, and the other male is Sheriff Andy Taylor, and then the one female in there, that's Lacey's, her name is Thelma Lou. So, Andy Barney and Thelma Lou. It is time to let the peacocks out. Now, I'm so nervous about it because it's been five weeks and I feel like they're they're used to us now. They can't, they like, they don't run away. Um, I don't, I don't know if I wanna keep waiting to let them out, like keeping them in that tiny space for longer but it's been five weeks and they depending on like the age of the bird at the time that you set it free I've done a lot of research supposedly it's been Annabelle please don't it's been long enough so I think I'm just gonna do it I think I'm going to put the goats on this side so they don't go up in their pen um, Annabelle 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 come here 
back, come 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 back, um, and, and open the gate and see what happens. I'm nervous. I'm nervous, but I think I'm going to do it anyway. You think we should do it? Let the peacocks out. It's been, you think it's time? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm nervous. Yeah. I think we're going to do it. I think we're going to see, you know, I mean, it is what it is, right? Okay. All right, Annabelle. Let's go let the peacocks out. The gate is open, but obviously it's new and different and they're kind of scared. So I'm gonna go feed all the boys, but I'm gonna leave you here and let you watch and see when they come out. The kids are gonna be here too, watching them and we'll see what they do. decision. Hopefully they'll come back to their pen. Yeah, hopefully they'll come back to eat. The plan with the peacocks was, I've done, the research I've done says that one, that training yearling peacocks, which is what they are, um, is fairly easy and you need to keep them enclosed in their new place for about a month, which I've been a week over a month. Um, and then you're going to slowly let them come out on their own. You open the like you open the gate and you let them come out. Um, I every day I go out, they get treats. I sit in the pen with them and get them used to me. All that has been happening over the past month. Y'all know you've seen. Okay, and then you let them out. You let them come out for a little while and then you close them back in. Okay, and we're, it's gonna be, a, it was supposed to be like a slow process. Well, they came out, as you saw. Um, I went to go feed the boys and I came back and they were still right at the gate. I was like, okay, I'll go do ducks and stuff. And then I went to go do the ducks and the kids went with me. And we looked from the pond over there to over here and they were flying over the fence out into the field. Okay, okay. Well, then they just took off, y'all. They took off to the woods and, and they disappeared. So I text Brooke and I was like, um, do you think they'll come back? <laughs> and she's like, she thinks they will. Brooke thinks they'll come back. Um, because this is where they've been eating, being fed and watered for five weeks. So there's no sign of them, but yeah. And if anybody local watches this and you find a couple of peacocks, they're, they're mine. Please let me know. <laughs> oh man, I really hope they come back. <laughs>
right y'all I am in the vehicle now this week I have been checking in on a neighboring farm not too far down the road while they've been out of town so I'm headed to check on it for the last time today I'm gonna show y'all a few of their animals they got some cute animals um, so we're gonna go do that the peacocks have not returned yet know it's been like it's been like less than an hour now and I'm slightly worried and frustrated I did so much research y'all I did so much research and I did it the way I was supposed to do it and I just think phew. the only thing I failed to do that some people said to do not everyone but some was, good gracious, there's a lot of traffic today, was to clip their wings like you would do chickens. Um, but there's not many people that do that anyway. Y'all hear that thumper behind me? There we go. Thank you. So, anyway, we're gonna, you hear my speed sliding around in the back? Okay, we're gonna go do this real quick like and I'll show you the animals and I'm really hoping that by the time I get back home I see some peacocks in the field. I'll be so frustrated if they're gone. Oh like wild peacocks living in my woods. headed back home but y'all th there's this property on my road that has these bulls I just I stopped in the road this this road has barely any traffic it'll be fine but y'all look at the size of these boys mm. oh my word mm. I hear you mm. is that not impressive or what mm. So it's now after lunchtime and it's getting hot so I changed into something cooler but y'all there's still no peacocks. I keep coming out here and I keep looking. Nothing. Nothing. So I mean we'll see this evening at feeding time if they come back to eat but keep you posted we'll see i guess i'm just gonna i'm gonna bring y'all with me through the whole of today so that y'all can be here with me at feeding up time tonight so we can see if these peacocks come back or not so okay well it's time to do some garden stuff so let's go before we go we're gonna check on pickles and her babies okay it's afternoon now remember there's two pipped eggs this morning I don't have my camera stand right now so I'm gonna flip you around and you're gonna look with me I'm gonna look under you and see if there's any babies okay can we look can we check oh, one two three four five eggs no babies yet no babies yet with these dollar weeds. I'm using a potato rake and it pulls up these roots. This, okay, this is a dollar weed, okay? And it grows on roots like this. Now this is edible, but it's a weed. It's where I don't want it. And there are millions of them. And last year, instead of 
cleaning on all my beds at the end of the season and then layering a thick layer of straw on top so that I could just take that off and plant. This year, I, I didn't do that part last year to benefit me this year and now I'm suffering for that. So my beds are full of these. So Brian weeded it down like the thickest. It was overflowing in all the beds and he weeded it down to just the bare roots. So now I'm using this to go through and pull out at least some of the roots to prepare for planting. This particular bed that I'm in right here is where I put my cucumbers. And um, if I can just give my seedlings a chance, a head start, and then like, then when these grow with it, the seedlings themselves, the plants will be established and they can grow cohesively. The dollar weeds don't get super tall. I don't see any areas around here that has them full grown. They don't get super tall and they act almost, they almost work as like a mulch because they don't, they're not super deep into the ground. There's, they're more surface, which is why this can pull up the majority of the roots that I have. Um, they can come up from down underneath in pretty good ways, but when they're spreading out, they spread surface, like right under the surface. So it almost acts like a mulch, but I have to get my vegetables established first. And so I can do this. This has worked before, before for me. I can grow with dollar weeds, but I just have to be able to get the top layer where my plants, my vegetables can establish first. Then the other weeds come through and it's not a big deal. So that's what I'm doing today. I've been working on all these beds. All of them were that way. All of them were full of dollar weeds. This is my last bed that I'm doing today. This is my cucumber bed. And then once I get this one done, then I'm gonna plant some stuff. Look at the size of this. There are so many earthworms in here and they are huge. This isn't even one of the big ones. There's ones that are much bigger than this in here. Okay, let's put you back in the ground. There you go. Ta-da! Y'all, look at this. All this, all these roots that I pulled out. Now these roots that I pulled out my word, there was a lot. Okay, now I'm gonna piece up. Now I'm gonna put up the piece of hog paint. Okay, I'm out in the big garden now, and I'm going to plant some squash. I'm going to do this one, and I'm going to do this one, and I think I'm going to stick these out here. I'm not a big pea or bean person when it comes to beans like this, but I'm going to give it a try. So, I'm going to start with those. And then I've got some seeds saved from Cosmos and sunflowers that I'm going to stick somewhere to. And I'm spilling them right now. Great. I just spilled sunflower seeds everywhere. <laughs> okay, so what I decided to do was plant one long row of the yellow crookneck squash. And then I did two short rows side by side of the purple hole peas 
Um, I only had one little package just to try it, just to see how it does here and things. So I just got one little area here. So I have these two rows behind me and I think what I'm going to do is I'm not going to grow a ton of this just because I have a lot of the yellow. I prefer the yellow, but I'm going to do a little bit of the zucchini, just a few spaced out. And then that outside row there, I think I'm going to do a row of sunflowers just as something to like attract the pollinators and things. I like to do flowers in amongst my vegetables. Now back there, is my corn and on the back side of the corn is something else that i'm trying this year something else new i'll tell you all about that in just a second that would be 10 zucchini plants that's way more than i want to do so i think what i'm going to do is only plant five and then do something else the rest of the way. Okay, I changed my mind. Instead of sunflowers, I'm gonna do some Cosmos that I saved. They're orange and yellow, and that's gonna be smaller, lower border. I'm gonna do that on the outside row. I'm still not sure what I'm gonna put on the end of this row yet. We'll see. What I'm going to plant, peanuts. I'm going to try peanuts. I have no idea if this is going to go well or not. It does not like wet feet and y'all know it stays pretty wet here, but, but we're predicted to have a dry season coming up. So maybe they'll be okay. So they come in, in this, like this, and you, you crack it open. And, oh, you can't see what I'm doing. Crack it open and you plant the little peanut and it grows vines that you want it to, it, it grows like tendrils and then they fall over and those tendrils like is what grows into the ground and grows the peanuts. That's what I understand. That's what I hear. So I got two bags and we're going to crack them and we're going to plant them and we're going to, we're going to see what happens. I'm going to make y'all, if these grow well and they dry well, I'm making peanut butter. I'm doing it. I had said in the past, and I had someone comment once before um, about if I ever made peanut butter, I should share it. And I said that I wanted to, that one day I would like to with my own peanuts. Well, that season will hopefully be this season. Cause I'm gonna plant these and we're gonna see what happens. All right, it's now evening time and I've come out here to feed up and right back there, y'all, we saw the peacocks. They came up pretty close, but then the cows were all coming up and so they went back to the woods, but they are still around. They were still right out there. I put their feed up here, that little red bowl you see, I put that on top of their house just in case they fly up on top instead of coming down and in. Um, I'm going to leave the gate open in case they come in to roost tonight. I'm really hoping that they'll come back all the way back. But the fact that they came back for supper and they were just right out there, they're still right at the edge of the tree line. So that's good. That is what I was hoping. That's what Brooke said they would do. And so hopefully, hopefully they will start coming closer and get more used to being out and about. If I do catch them in here if I do catch them in here then I am gonna close this gate and we're going to 
like give it a little bit more time, let them be in here for a little bit longer before I open them up and let them out again. But they're not gone. They're still around. So I'm very thankful for that. <laughs> Just a minute. I'll come to y'all in a minute. All right, y'all, and the very last thing we're gonna do this evening is we're gonna go check on pickles and we're gonna see if hopefully we have some little pickle babies. I latched this gate between the goats and uh, Pearl eating her supper just so they don't bother her. I heard a peacock. <laughs> okay, let's go in here and check on pickles real quick. Okay. Nothing yet, y'all. Nothing yet. Any pip eggs? Oh, yeah. There's pip eggs. Okay, so see this? See this pip? See that little beak in there? Can you hear it? It's in there. Okay, they are gonna hatch. So that means, y'all, that you're not gonna get to see any funny looking pickle babies on this video but i will be having babies by the next video so you'll see it then all right y'all thanks for hanging out with me today all day long and thanks for being here for the past year to everyone who has been with me since the beginning and to everyone who has recently joined the journey i'm excited to have y'all here as well it has been a wonderful year and I am so excited to see what this next year is going to bring. I am going to continue to show up here for y'all on YouTube, continue to share our lives here on YouTube. There's so much that is possibly happening in the future. There's plans, we're building, we're growing, we're changing. We are, there's a lot, there's always a lot. I mean, on a homestead, there's always something happening. And I'm really excited to share that with y'all for another year. Thank you all so much. I appreciate you more than you know. And until next time, keep on the sunny side.